Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. Do you have a stack of holiday fat quarters just waiting for inspiration? In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create 30 ornaments from a stack of nine fat quarters. We will be making gathered angels, stuffed angels, and stocking ornaments. They're fun and easy, so let's get started. I'm totally out of the aqua of this one. And this one, since I fussy cut it, I don't think I can get anything else out of that. I think that one's done. This one's done. I have plenty of this one. A lot of this uh, pink because I didn't really use this one for the stockings. And then I have a lot of this, which is cute. And, and I have plenty of this one. So I'm going to, I think that I can squeeze 10 little stuffed angels. I'm going to piece them with the, this motif centered on the chest. Started with this one. It's not exactly perfect. I think I'll make this a little wider, but I think this would work. And I just did these two stripes and it was a little bit bland, even, even with the stitchery. So I added a little bit of lace, that's nice. And then once I saw that, I wondered if I shouldn't have put this fabric here. I don't have a lot of options. <laughs> so um, I think I'll try to do five with this aqua unicorn and five with the navy unicorn. I found that I needed to cut a three inch square around the unicorn motif in order to fill this space. And I know that after I stuff it and I gather up the top, the unicorn's head is gonna be quite close to the top. So I wanted to have enough room to move it down at least an inch. That was my objective. This band I cut an inch and a quarter and then this, I didn't really measure. I just, anyway, I just stitched it. I used this on the back because this is what I have the most of. So we'll see if I could get five out of this and five out of this. I'm gonna give it a try. I've cut my foundation piece from non-fusible interfacing. And I've started with this three inch square with this motif centered. And if you don't have the exact same fabrics that I'm using, of course you can adjust to whatever the size and shape of your particular um, design allows. Then I have a one and a quarter inch um, strip of this pink dot, which I have the dots, the lines going vertically. And I'm going to line this up here. Actually, I do it this way and stitch this down with a scant quarter inch and then press and fold it. And then I'm going to add, I don't have very much of this, but I should have enough to do five of these ornaments. So let me do this first step and then I will be right back. There's the first seam. I'll trim that off. And then, hmm, looks like I have about enough of this one. So I will seam this one, press, flip, and I'll be right back. I've covered my foundation, so I'll trim it and then stitch around the edge from the back, very close to the edge here. And then I'm gonna do some decorative stitches along these seams. Here we go, I've stitched around the outside and trimmed it. And now I'll do a couple of rows of decorative stitching along these two seams. I actually placed this decorative, decorative stitch line above the seam. I just felt like it would show a little bit more. And this one, even though it's a nice thick stitch, it, it's not super obvious. Um, now I'm going to add some lace. I have this lace, which fits just right. And I'm going to place it, I'm gonna center it 
about like this, and I'll secure it to this row right here. I have the most of this pink fabric, so I'll use this for the backing. I'll line it up, pin it, cut it out, and then sew around the edge. I'm gonna leave the top open. I'll backstitch right here, and I'll stitch around the entire outside with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. I've stitched around and now I'm going to trim even closer, maybe a couple of uh, clips in the corners here, and then I'm going to turn it to the right side. By the way, I love my Kai scissors. They're nice and sharp. Now I'll gently turn this to the right side through the opening that I've left in the top. That looks good. Nice. Get this edge. And now I will stuff it. And sew up the top. The head is a one inch wooden ball knob. You can find the directions for my face in the Focus on Faces video. There we go. Now I'm going to add a lace collar. I have about 15 or 16 inches of this 5 eighths of an inch wide white lace. And I'm just going to fold under the end and secure my thread and then just gather up the top edge just right underneath the header. And it's, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just go in and out, in and out, in and out. I use a thimble. And I'll place this collar right around her chin. I'm hoping it doesn't hide the unicorn. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, you can still see him or her. I can still see the unicorn barely. I suppose I could have used a narrower lace, but I think that's going to be cute. So I will secure the lace in back and tie off my thread. To create the hair, I fold a four by six inch index card in half and then wrap the yarn back and forth the long way and then stitch across with the machine. This is the same thing we did for the first angel. And then I'll reach in and remove the card. And then with my hot glue gun, I will apply glue across the top of the head, across the forehead. This, uh, this is a one inch ball knob, but it's about the same size as the last angel that we made. I need a name for that one. The five inch square angel has that. And then I'll apply more glue along here to the back. And then along this side to the back, just along the side of the head to the center back bottom. I'm pressing the yarn into there. It worked out just perfectly. The ends met perfectly at the bottom center. And then I will pull the yarn loops up into a top knot. And then with a needle and thread, you don't need to use a needle and thread, but I always do. <laughs> you can just use a thread. Um, I'm gonna pull it really tight because the only thing that's going to hold this together really is glue. So there's, there's just glue here. And um, I just wanna be sure that I make everything as, as secure as possible. So I have this held very tight and then I'll tie it again in front. This is a doubled strand of quilting thread. And then I'm gonna tie the knot right here a little bit off center 
because I know that's right where I intend to glue an embellishment. This is the first time I've made this design and I really wish that I had moved the unicorn down a little bit, which means that when I cut the unicorn out, this is a three inch square. I think I'll make it three and a half by three so that there'll be a little bit more room at the top and then I won't center it, but I'll move it you know, more to the bottom. So we'll see if that works better. Then for the halo, I'll cut five or six inches of this gold wire. Fold and twist, create a circle, bend the stem like this, and then I'll apply some glue to the stem. Press it into the center of the top knot. And then I have two options for the embellishment. I could do a bow or a star. Are you thinking a star? How about a little tiny star? That'd be cute, right? I don't know. I just feel like she's just a little like pastel-y and a little bit bland. So we'll give her a little sparkle. Just a little bit. Now for her hanging loop, I'm going to sew a length of 1 16th inch satin ribbon through the hair. You saw how I went low down into the hair below the place where it's tied off. Nice and low so that it is secure in there. I also like when I'm stitching through, if it gets hung up on a little bit of glue, I feel like it's really secure. And then finally, I've already selected this wing. And you know I have a Focus on Wings video where you can learn exactly how I make these. They're not hard. So I've applied some glue about the size of a penny or a dime, and I'm going to glue that to the back of her head. A lot of these steps are exactly the same as other angels. And so I don't want to go, <laughs> I don't want to bore you too much, but just in case this is your first time that you have seen one of my videos, I want to be thorough and complete. This angel is finished. I have my five stuffed angels completed um, with this group of fabrics and I found after the first one that if I just moved this uh, fussy cut unicorn square down a quarter of an inch, then it was much easier to see below the lace collar. So I have created a new window template and I'll just use this for the next fabric. It's three and a quarter tall and three across. Here's what I have left of the navy unicorns. And when I cut these, I'm going to center like this with about a half an inch at the bottom and each side, and then about a full inch above the motif. So this will be at the top of the pattern. So this will be here, and then this should be centered. I think it'll work. Then I have enough of, I have a little bit of this and I have a nice piece of this. I'm not sure what I could possibly use that I would have enough to cut the backs, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna cut five backs from this and then five unicorns. And then hopefully this will be enough for five of the little strip with the lace. And then again, this for the bottom. I'm gonna hope for the best. I'm on my way. I've got my unicorn square, and then I have a one and a quarter inch strip of this one. It's like a peach color. And I'm going to sew it here. And then I think I'm going to add a strip of this one. And I'll do the machine embroidery and add the lace and we'll see how it goes. Now I will thread my machine with navy thread 
and sew the front to the back around the edges, leaving the opening at the top. It's stuffed, and so now I will gather up the top edge with a double strand of quilting thread. Now I'll glue on my little face, the head. You just put some hot glue on. There's the hair. Now just to make something a little bit different from the, from the pastel version, I'm gonna use the red and white baker's twine to tie off her, her hair, her top knot, her bun. Just give it a little bit of red. There's a little bit of red in this print. I don't wanna make it look patriotic. So just a tiny, tiny bit of red and white there would be cute. I think I'm still going to use the, the stars, but I realized that the tiny star didn't show up very well. I think I'll go up to this size. There we go. And then the hanging loop. And finally, there's her halo. Adorable. Okay, now four more. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.